The children of prisoners, the silent victims of incarceration, getting a rare opportunity, a chance to spend a single day with their fathers in prison. Some say it can make a world of difference, but how do you fit a lifetime's worth of parenting into just 24 hours? Nightline co-anchor Juju Chang goes behind prison walls for our series, Face to Face. <laughs> Hello. Hey there. Hey. Love y'all getting ready to come. Can't wait till you get here. Eight-year-old Arkinia Graham has never met her father. They've grown close over the phone, but Johnny Trey Williams is serving 23 years in prison for second-degree murder. I'm excited to see you, and I'm nervous. Today, she and nearly 30 other kids are getting a special visit with their dads, designed to prevent the kind of damage kids suffer when a parent is in prison. Like, they're gonna have so much fun. Yes. They are just some of the nearly three million children in this country with a mom or dad behind bars. Ethan Buckner is seven. You wanna see your dad today? Amaya Matthews is nine. She and her little brother live three hours away. So how excited are you to see your dad? Very, like, I can jump super high because I'm so excited. You're so excited, I know. My I... dad told me that there's this one guy that hasn't even met his daughter. She's here, do you want to meet her? Amaya has visited before, I'll you. but today is different. Arkenia, I want you to meet Amaya. She heard about you. Meeting your dad behind bars is a really big deal. Why is it a big deal? Like, this is the one time you can, like, sit in his lap, let him hug you. He can't get up at all. Show dad, man. Show him what you got, son. The day before the kids arrive, the dads get a seminar on fatherhood. That's where we meet Amaya's father. What's it like waiting six months to see your kids? Jeremiah Matthews has been in and out of jail for 12 years for burglary. I just get scared that they're going to forget. I know my daughter forgives me, but, you know, she told me that this is your last time, Dad. She's like, I love you, but you keep breaking promises and getting in trouble. And she was seven when she told me this, and I just, I don't want to disappoint them. I've said some very mean things to him. You've seen, said mean things to him? What kind of things have you said? Like, I, I'm not going to trust you no more because you promised me that, I would, that you would be there for me for the rest of my life. And then you go back to jail. And so what did he say when you said that? He just was like, OK, then please gain that trust back. As soon as I get home, I'll try to make everything different and all. Do you believe him? Eh. You want to. Yeah, I but, want to. But it's hard to. He's lied to me. Okay, what you want to do when you look at your child in the eyes? Arkenia's dad is learning a lot about fatherhood and forgiveness as well. I'm here for you and always will be, no matter what. He split before she was born, wound up killing a man in a bar fight, and though they talk a lot on the phone, he's still anxious about meeting her face to face. What, do, what are you feeling? Anticipation. I try to hold my hand and I'm shaking. As nervous as any father getting to hold his daughter for the very first time. She brought something for you, too. That's beautiful. Hello, da Daddy. I really wish when I come to see you that you could come home with me. I love you so much. I love you, too. <laughs> but this quiet moment is just a preview of what will be a very special day. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna the next morning, as excitement builds in this humble prison gym... Boys and girls, they're coming in just a minute. ...the dads are announced one by one. Ethan hasn't seen his dad in seven months. His pent-up emotions bubbling over. For Amaya... All her anguish and her doubt vanishes. I miss you guys. I love you too. I love you. I love you too. I love you. Arkenia doesn't hesitate. Her father, no longer just a voice on the phone. Finally. Finally? You happy? 
I'm happy for you. Jeremiah says he's working hard to stay out of trouble behind bars to earn this day with his kids. Amen. There are 1,300 men in this prison. Only 20 of them are here today. I know this is a special event. The program called One Day with God was that founded by Scotty Barnes. The importance of these boys and girls having relationships with their mothers and fathers. She tells us her dad was a convicted drug dealer, spending most of her childhood locked up. And I never had a hug. I'd never even been told I love you by my dad. You know, a lot of people on the outside would say, well, these guys are convicted murderers mm -hmm. and, and, you know, felons. Mm -hmm. Why do they deserve this kind of perk? I think they forget that the children are the silent victims. The little children, by the time they're eight and nine years old, go out on the streets, and if their the gangs are, come on over and join my family. Jeremiah says it's giving him incentive so that the next time he's released in just 11 months, it'll be the last. Me either! It's okay, you're only gonna know what you can try. Throughout the day, it's clear the dads are trying to cram years of parenting into a couple of hours. The trick to cursing is staying on the same lines. One Day with God is in seven states, fueled by private donations. At a time when prison reentry programs are being cut, they're expanding to five other prisons in Michigan alone. <laughs> they may be walking in circles in a crowded gym, but for these fathers and sons, it's an intimate moment without the bars between them. Good job. Children of offenders are six times more likely than their peers to end up in jail themselves. 15-year-old Dorikas Green Jr. is already in danger of fulfilling that prophecy. Today, he's wearing an ankle bracelet under strict supervision for his run-ins with the law. Dorikas' dad is serving a life sentence for murder. Yeah, we are, we are. Do you miss your dad? Wow. I told him, I know I'm not out there with him, but For the girls, there's a father-daughter dance. It hurts me to know that I hurt her. I mean, she's like, she's the most important female in my life. I mean, other than my wife, she's really the, the most important. And I've lost so much time with her that I can never get back. And to know that they got to go back home, and I can't pour it all in one day. There's no, there's no way. Arkinia's dad is trying to be a father figure beyond this one day. When she started acting out in school recently, it was her dad who helped straighten her out. He called me right away, and he was like, where's Arkinia, can I speak with her? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> your dad is on the phone, because I'm like, oh, he's calling the hand of business, you know. He's parenting from behind bars. Yes, yes. You're gonna be freezing. Shakisha Graham has a powerful reason for bringing her daughter from Florida to Michigan for this chance to bond with her dad. You work 12 hours a day. Yes. You're a single mom. Yes, ma'am. Why spend so much of your hard-earned money to bring your daughter here? Well, I was one of those kids. I was ashamed to tell people that my father is in prison. So I put myself in my daughter's shoes. They have these few fleeting hours to say the things that need saying. much loaded in one day. For the dads, a pledge to strive to be better. For the kids, a precious dose of what they need most.
and for the rest of us, a reminder of what it means to be a good dad, and that the feeling of being embraced by your father can last forever. For Nightline, I'm Juju Chang in Muskegon, Michigan. What a feeling. Well, one day with God in the end surprised our Kenya's mom and us by reimbursing their airfare.